Hey there Dev Squad, today we're going to be taking a look at how we can import custom characters into Unreal Engine 5. Throughout this video, you're going to learn absolutely everything you need to know to create a custom character. We're going to be going through the whole process, starting with importing custom animations, setting up our animation blend spaces, working with animation blueprints and the final implementation. By the end of this, you are going to have a complete game character with locomotion that's going to be able to move around. If you want to take this one step further, we are going to be adding additional videos showing you how to set up things like jumping and melee combat for this character. If you want to follow along, you can go ahead and download the resources in the description. Or if you have your own character and animations, by all means, go ahead and use that. I'd like to take a moment to shout out our sponsor for today's video. Wingfox. Learn new skills as an artist, creating beautiful 3D characters and environments for your Unreal Engine project from their advanced courses. Be sure to check out their latest course covering character creation with a focus on real-time rendering. Links in the description. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to need is a project that we can implement our character into. For me, I'm going to be creating a brand new project. However, if you have an existing project, you are more than welcome to use this. I'm going to be using the third person template for this, as it's going to be a third person character we're working on. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to games and use the third person template. I'm then going to set up all of my settings here the way that I need them to. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about these settings, make sure you go ahead and check out my Unreal Engine 5 Essentials course. I'm just going to go ahead and give this the name Dev Squad, and then I'm going to create this. This is going to create our brand new project and we can get started with importing in our animations. If you haven't already downloaded all of the resources from the link in the description, go ahead and download them. Inside of this locomotion pack, you are going to have a couple of things. First things first, you are going to have all of your animations, that being your idle, your walk and your run. We're also going to have some combat stuff that we're going to be using later on. But for now, your Unreal Engine should be open and ready to go. So having said that, let's go ahead and start off with importing the animations. And the character of course, because we're going to need a character. Doing this could not be simpler. All I need to do is go ahead and open up my content browser. And I'm going to dock this in my layout just to make this a little bit easier to work with. Now, what I'm going to be doing is just right clicking and adding a brand new folder, giving it the name character. Inside of here, I'm then going to have two subfolders, one called mesh and another one called animations. So that way I can very easily organize my files a little bit better as I am importing them. So let's go ahead and start off with the skeletal mesh then. I'm going to open up the mesh folder and I'm going to take my locomotion pack. With this, the skeletal mesh is actually contained within all of these files, but the one that I'm going to be taking it from is the idle object here. If I go ahead and drag and drop this into my content browser, I am going to be able to import this making sure that when I do import this, I import this as a skeletal mesh and I also import this, uh, import the mesh, making sure both of these options are currently set to true. What we're going to do then with our character mesh is just go through and just very quickly look at all of these settings. So we want to make sure the skeleton is set to none because this is a brand new character. If you had a character and you were importing animations, then you can go ahead and use that skeleton. Everything in here looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just press import on this. We're going to give it a couple of seconds and our character is going to load in. So as you can see here, I've got my skeletal mesh, my physics asset, my skeleton, and I've even got a material with some textures that's all been imported for me, which is great. Now, what I'm going to do is just open up my idle skeletal mesh just to make sure that my character has imported as it should do. So if this takes a couple of seconds to load, don't worry about it. Open it up and let's have a little look. So as you can see here, our character has imported correctly and it's even applied the material for us, which is great. 
So this is all looking really awesome. If you want to do a little bit more work to your material, then what you can do is go ahead and open this up and then start putting in some of the inputs, some extra little options if that's something that you want to do. For now, I am happy with this. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and make sure that this is closed. We've got our character. Let's go ahead and rename it from idle. So that way we can actually start finding this a little bit easier. So the bits that we need to rename is our skeletal mesh, physics asset, and our skeleton. So we're gonna take our skeletal mesh and we're gonna right click and rename this. And we're gonna give this a name, character underscore mesh. Same thing with the physics asset. So I'm gonna be giving this the name character underscore physics asset. And then lastly, for the skeleton, character underscore skeleton. This is entirely optional. I'm just doing this to make it a little bit easier to find it later on. With that done, in our content browser, we're now gonna go over to our animations folder and we're going to start importing all of these animations that we've got here. To do that, all I'm doing is just selecting these and dragging and dropping them. This time, we're going to be making sure that we adjust the settings. We don't want to import this as a mesh and we do not want to import, uh, we, we don't want to sort of import anything other than animations with this. So having said that, set your skeleton to the one you've just created, which for me is character underscore skeleton. And then all we're gonna do is scroll down and press import all. And then give it a couple of seconds and all of our animations are going to be imported into Unreal Engine. It is as simple as that. And what we're going to do from there is very quickly go through these animations to make sure that they have all been imported correctly. So starting off with my idle, I'm just gonna double click on this to open it up. And as you can see, it is playing my idle animation as it should. And I can do the same thing for the run and also for the walk. And that to me is looking good. So we've got our character mesh. We have got our animations. The next thing that we need to do for our character is figure out a way to blend between our different animations depending on the speed of the character because we don't want them standing still the whole time. We don't want them running all the time. So what we're gonna do is find a way to take some data in the form of a speed value and then blend between different animations according to that value. And the way that we're going to be doing this is using something called an animation blend space. The blend space is just going to blend through animations depending on data, in this case, speed. To create this animation blend space, all I'm going to do is right click in my content browser, go to animation, and then I'm going to be adding myself an animation blend space 1D. The difference between blend space and blend space 1D is 1D is only going to have one axis, one form of data, whereas the blend space can have two points of data. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my blend space 1D using the skeleton that I created earlier, and I'm going to be giving this the name locomotion underscore BS. The BS standing for blend space. And if I go ahead and open this up, we're now going to be taken into our blend space editor. And if you look at this, very straightforward. We have got our preview and our viewport in the middle, our assets in the bottom right, we have got our grid in the bottom here, and then all of our settings on the left hand side. What we're going to be doing is plotting animations along this grid. We can see this, it currently goes from zero to 100. And we're just going to be taking that speed and moving and playing different animations depending on the value of the speed. So let's set up our grid then. To do this, we're gonna go over to our left-hand side under asset details. We're gonna go to our horizontal axes and then inside of here, we are going to give this the name speed. And as you can see at the bottom here, this has now updated for me. With that being done, we now need to set the minimum and the maximum values for our grid. The default movement speed for Unreal Engine characters using the template is from going from zero to 600. So having said that, we're gonna go ahead and use those values. We've got a couple of other settings down here, such as the interpolation time or number of grid divisions, 
If you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, make sure you go ahead and check out my animation material. For now, what we're going to do is start plotting our animations onto this grid. So the first one we're going to have is our idle. We're going to be plotting this onto the grid at the zero position. So when the character is not moving, there is no speed, we are going to get them to play this idle animation. To plot this, I can just click it from my asset browser in the bottom right hand corner, just click, drag and drop and move it all the way over to the speed. And notice as I do that, we get the little tooltip. And with that done, I can now see the character is idling, which is great. I'm then going to add my next animation, which is my walk animation. So I'm going to drag this to the 300 point. So when they're moving at 300 speed, they're going to be walking. And lastly, at the run, I'm going to take my run animation and add this to the 600 speed. What I've done now, like I said earlier, is I am now changing animations, blending between them, depending on the speed. I can preview this by holding down shift and then moving my mouse along the grid. So you can see if I move this to something like 300, it's going to be walking. If I move it to a speed 600, it's going to be doing the full run. But the great bit about blend spaces is in between that, it is going to blend a nice balance between those two animations, which in my case is our walk and our run. And that is perfect. So let's go ahead and take a look now at how we can start utilizing this for implementation into a character. And the way that we're going to be doing this is by using something called an animation blueprint. An animation blueprint is essentially going to allow us to run our animations depending on the, ver on the value of certain variables. Vari variables just being data, that so things like speed or direction. So let's go ahead and create an animation blueprint. I'm going to right click, add an animation blueprint. And I'm just going to be using the same skeleton as before. Press OK, and I'm going to be giving this the name character underscore anim BP. Perfect. And then I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. The animation blueprint editor is really straightforward. We have got two parts. We've got the anim graph, which is where we're going to be plugging in our animations and setting up our rules. The event graph is where we're going to be running code and getting the value of those variables that we're working with. Having said that, what we're going to do is start setting up our animations. And what it's expecting right now is for us to take something and then put it into the result here. However, that is not ideal. What we need to do is set up something called a state machine, which is going to allow us to play different animations depending on the state of the character. So we could have an idle state, we could have a jumping state, we could have a uh, swiping state for the sword, we can have all sorts and have different animations playing when we need them to. For us, all we want is just the one state right now, which is going to be using our locomotion. So to do that, right click in your anim graph and we are going to add a new state machine and we're going to hook this up to our result. The result is what is going to be played by the animation blueprint. If I go ahead and compile this, I can start testing this. Now, before we go into the state machine, I just want you to get in the habit of renaming this. So I'm just going to call this state machine. And then I'm going to double click on this to open it up. Inside of here, we can add our very first state. And the name of this state I'm going to give this is locomotion. And if I was to go ahead and double click on this to open it up, what I can do is drag my blend space from my asset browser straight into this. And now, if I was to go ahead and preview this, which is really easy to do, I can do that by going over to my Anim Preview Editor. And notice we've not got any values to play with right now, so I'm going to add a variable and give this the name speed and make sure it is of the type float because that is the variable type that this locomotion is expecting. I can put this value of speed into locomotion, compile this, and then start adjusting my speed here 
to start previewing how this animation blueprint is going to look. And as you can see here, we have got that functionality set up for us and it's really, really good to go. So we've got a variable called speed. We can blend depending on the speed. What we need to do now is actually take the speed from the character. The character for our game is going to be stored within our character blueprint, which in this case is the third person character. I can find this in content, third person VP, and then blueprints. So I'm going to be casting to this blueprint actor, getting the velocity, which is my speed, and then hooking it up into that animation blueprint variable that we've got there. So let's do that. So let's go back to our animation blueprint. And because we need to work with blueprints here to do this, what I need to do is I actually need to go over to my event graph here, and then we're going to be using this event, which is event blueprint update animation. I'm going to be dragging out of this and I'm going to be casting to my third person character and make sure this is the character, not the class. And this is essentially going to allow us to communicate to that blueprint and start getting information like the velocity. So to be able to do this, I need to hook up my try get pawn owner. And then as third person character, I am going to get my velocity. So just drag out from there, get your velocity. And then from there, we are just going to get the length of this vector. And this is just going to convert it to a float. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my speed. To set my speed, drag our variable here onto the event graph, set the speed and hook up your return value from your vector length into your speed there. And then go ahead and drag and drop those to connect it. So our flow is every frame, we're going to communicate, we're going to get the speed, and then because our animation blueprint is live, it's just going to feed it into our blend space here, which is perfect. So let's go ahead and test the speed value one more time. And we can see our character is working as it should. So now that is all of the complicated stuff out of the way. We've pretty much set up our basic movement and our animations here. What we need to do now is we actually need to connect our third person character here to our skeletal mesh that we just created. To do that, all we need to do is open up this third person character. Again, that is underneath content, third person BP and blueprints. And then inside of here, we are going to go to our viewport, select our mannequin or our existing character. And we are going to be changing this to our character mesh, the one that we imported earlier on. And as you can see, this is now updated. But we now need to tell it which animations to play. And that is all through our animation blueprint. So, so what we need to do is set that. To set it, we're going to go over to our animation mode, set this to use animation blueprint, and then our animation blueprint class is going to be the one we just created, which is character underscore anim BP. And as you can see, it's instantly going to start playing the idle animation. There's no speed. Everything is done. Everything is good to go. We're then going to close that, press play. And what you'll find now is you can play as your character here. So we can run around and it's going to blend between the different animations depending on the speed, which is absolutely perfect. And we're going to be doing a lot more with this, such as jumping or combat or blocking as we go through more videos. That's it for this video. By now, you should have a game character which is able to move around your level. If you want to see more videos like this, just like our melee combat or our jumping tutorial, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and check back for our upcoming videos. If you want to support more videos just like this, make sure you go ahead and check out our Patreon, the links for which is in the description. For now, that's everything. Stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.